Welcome to Fresh Waters, spiritual reflections helping you to grow in faith. Today's session is Be Repentant. The key concept is, it is God's will that everyone comes to repentance. The scripture reading today is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. It is God's will that we all come to repentance, as the scripture says. To repent is to change one's mind from being in control of one's life to letting God be in control. It is turning from our sins and committing to live a holy life. It is stopping to live for oneself and starting to live for the Lord. It results in a change of heart where the things of God that used to repulse you now excite you. The concept of repentance have been around since the days of the Old Testament prophets. It was Isaiah who wrote, This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says, In repentance and rest is your salvation, in quietness and trust is your strength, but you would have none of it. The prophet Jeremiah wrote, Therefore this is what the Lord says, If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. And it was Ezekiel who wrote, Therefore say to the house of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Repent, turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. In the New Testament, John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus' ministry by first preaching repentance. He said, Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. John was preaching against the religious leaders of the day who did not produce fruit with their unrepentant beliefs. Jesus began his ministry by preaching repentance. Matthew wrote, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The focus of Jesus' ministry was not to make a name for himself, but to bring people to repentance. When Jesus was once criticized by the Pharisees and the teachers of the law for socializing with tax collectors and sinners, he responded, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus spoke of the value of finding that one lost sheep by saying, I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Jesus compared the joy that exists much to a woman who finds her lost and valuable coin. Jesus said, In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. The apostles preach for a response of repentance when they preach the gospel. Peter preached, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. The Apostle Paul preached about repentance when he was in Athens. He said, In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. To the Ephesian elders, Paul said to them, I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. 
repentance is important to God. The prophets preached it. Jesus preached it. The apostles preached it. Yet there are some gospel presentations today that do not emphasize or even mention repentance. They have converts who believe in Jesus, but they never really dealt with their sins. God wants us to come to him repentant, broken, and humble before him. Jesus did say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, if it is God's will that everyone comes to repentance, what does that mean? First of all, it means that we need to come to God repentant, broken, and humbled. Is your faith purely academic, or are you truly sorry over your sins? Secondly, it means that we have a responsibility to share the gospel. If we have truly experienced God's grace, then we do have that responsibility to bring as many people as we can to repentance. My prayer for you is that you have truly experienced repentance and is motivated to share with others about it. Just think about it. Have you truly repented of your sins? Is repentance part of your gospel presentation? What does everyone to come to repentance mean to you? What one thing will you do this week to help others come to repentance. May God bless you in your spiritual journey.